If you're looking at trying RPG Maker, you might be confused by the differences between versions. This might especially be the case for the two latest engines, MV and MZ. RPG Maker MV was released in 2015, whereas MZ, the latest engine at the time of this video, was released in 2020. And yet, these two engines might appear to be very similar to the unknowing eye. So what's changed in 5 years? Should you buy RPG Maker MV or MZ? And if you already have MV, should you upgrade to MZ? Similar to MV, RPG Maker MZ also utilises JavaScript and has many similar functions to MV. They also both use 48 by 48 map graphics by default, something which sadly hasn't been updated despite user feedback. However, there are plugins available for both of these engines to use a program called Tiled D, which can allow you to use your own custom tile sizes and collisions, so this ultimately might not even really be an issue if you're looking for different sizes. RPG Maker MZ also boasts a brand new RTP, featuring a new cast of characters and artwork, tiles, enemies, and more. If you already own RPG Maker MV, you might also be surprised to learn that you can open your projects in RPG Maker MZ. While some plugins may maintain their functionality, there are some differences in the program's coding syntax that may mean you'll need to update your plugins to make them compatible, but a lot of basic plugins do generally still work. Upon opening RPG Maker MZ, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was MV. A lot of the user interfaces have remained exactly the same, with some minor added functionality sprinkled in. This could be seen as a positive, however, if you are used to using RPG Maker MV, as it's incredibly easy to slip into using the newer engine. The main features advertised for MZ that are an improvement over MV are the upgraded map editor, character generator, new battle system, particle animations, plugin commands, autosave, and some other nifty built-in features. A lot of these are something that can be achieved in RPG Maker MV using plugins, but having them built into MZ by default is much cleaner and leaves less opportunity for performance drops and compatibility issues. The upgrades to the map editor are something that a lot of long-time users have been crying out for since the days of RPG Maker XP. Users can now select the exact layer for each tile, meaning elements of your map that are further down can be removed without also deleting the upper layers. This saves a lot of time and, frankly, remedies something that was a big headache in RPG Maker MV. Of course, this is irrelevant if your game uses very simple maps, or if you're a fan of parallax mapping, which can be achieved in RPG Maker MV instead. The character generator is also another area that was improved upon with user feedback. It's now possible to adjust the positioning of each part using offsets, but this is capped after a certain number of pixels to prevent some slightly more hideous creations, something that previous iterations of the character generator have been infamous for. The default positioning of parts in RPG Maker MV's character generator made it pretty difficult to make good looking characters, and you'd often have to edit the parts themselves, or take your finished character into an image editing program to fix them. RPG Maker MZ also made it possible to add brand new colours to the palette for the generator, which is something MV was limited on. You can forego the built-in generators though if you have a different source for your game's art, such as your own drawings or an artist to provide them for you, as well as exterior character generators. We've discussed that RPG Maker MZ has its own new RTP, and while this isn't strictly more than what you'd get from MV in terms of raw numbers, the art style has taken a definite turn in some areas. Depending on your preference for the style and characters, you may want to choose an engine based on which assets you prefer. You're also licensed to use the assets as long as you own the maker they belong to, so you could double up your assets if you own both engines. When it comes to gameplay, RPG Maker MZ has an option built into the database that allows you to choose between how your battle system will look and function. You can choose between the front view and side view appearances, as well as the battle system itself. This is an advantage over MV, as you can use the new time progress battles, which allows each actor and enemy to act at their own speed based on stats and conditions instead of just turn-based actions. Although I haven't personally seen this publicly recreated at the time of this video, I would imagine that this is something that could be achieved in RPG Maker MV via plugins. However, that's not to say it would function as smoothly as MZ's built-in system, or that it wouldn't cause compatibility issues with other plugins. RPG Maker MZ also has much nicer looking animations, depending on what you're looking for. As it uses files from Effexia to make particle animations, each time a specific animation plays, it could be completely unique depending on how it's set up. It's also much, much easier for users who aren't artistically inclined to make their own animations, which was an issue with previous makers. Again, particle animations are something that could potentially be possible in RPG Maker MV, although the engine itself was not made with them in mind, and so it's likely it would suffer from a huge hit to performance. Personally, I'm very fond of how particle animations make it much easier to produce map effects, such as fires, smoke, fireflies, fog, and more. This is something that could be achieved through other means in RPG Maker MV, too, although it may not have the exact same result or look quite the same. Something brand new that was added to RPG Maker MZ that cannot be replicated by MV is the new plugin commands feature. 
These make it a lot easier to use plugins on the user's end, and it does away with the user having to copy and paste mini scripts into the editor like with MV. This makes plugins more approachable and user friendly, which is something that made customising MV games a little harder to get into from a beginner's perspective. By default, RPG Maker MZ also makes use of an autosave feature. Again, this is something that could be achieved with plugins in MV, but having it built into MZ is hassle free. MZ also boasts some smaller, useful features like being able to preview move routes in engine, which is something MV couldn't do. In MV, the user would have to count how many tiles they wanted their events to move on the map, open the move route, and remember that pattern, and then have to test it in game to make sure it all worked. Having that feature in MZ cuts out a lot of time and frustration if you frequently find yourself using move routes for cutscenes and events. Another small feature that could theoretically be done in MV, but has been added by default to MZ, is name boxes. The user can now type in any name they want, and it will appear above the message window using the same window skin and font as the defaults. This is just a small addition that can add a lot of consistency to your games, as well as making better use of the UI. The touchscreen and mouse UI have also had some slight improvements. The player can now use the mouse to hover over menu buttons, and they only need to be tapped or clicked once to open a new menu. Lastly, there are some additions to the movement settings of pictures. The user can now make use of easing to make pictures move around in a much cleaner and more satisfying way. As mentioned, a lot of these things can theoretically be achieved in RPG Maker MV if you know what you're doing. And honestly, if you already own MV and you're happy with it, and none of these features seem like something you'd be interested in, you're probably better off staying with MV instead of upgrading. MZ does have the upper hand of several performance upgrades that make it run better, which also keeps it in line with ever-changing operating system requirements. But if your project runs fine in MV, there's no immediate need to upgrade to MZ. If you already own RPG Maker MV and you're still unsure, I would recommend downloading the free trial for MZ, which is available from the official website. You can use the trial for 20 days, which is a generous period of time to assess the changes for yourself. If you don't own either engine and you're looking to buy one, I would definitely recommend MZ over MV. I would still suggest that you download the free trial as well, just to try before you buy. You can also take a look at my video, Should You Make a Game with RPG Maker, to find out a bit more about developing a game with the engine. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your projects!